Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself so far in this class, but I gotta say, now is when things are gonna really start to get interesting. Today, we're gonna look at keyboard events. <laughs> that may not sound very interesting, but the implications of this are, are really exciting. You're going to get to see how you can start to use the keyboard to manipulate things that get drawn on the screen. Now, obviously, this is the first step for some very interesting programs. So I'm not gonna talk too much more. Let's just get started. To illustrate keyboard event handling, I want to use a very simple echo program. You can see the entire program here on the screen, but I first want to run it, and then we'll talk about the code. So here it is. I have a canvas, a very small canvas area, and I'm about to press the key F. As soon as I press it, you can see two things happen. First, you see a red F appearing in the canvas. Second, in the status area, you see it says down F. Now, I'm still holding F right now. Okay, The down F means the key F has been pushed down. So that kind of that event occurred. As soon as I release it, you see the status area says up F. That means the key F has been, there's a keyboard up event. Okay, and you'll also see in the canvas, I've stopped drawing it. Now I can push H down, up, J down, up. And you see what happens. Okay, so how does this work? Well, I have a very simple program with one piece of state, this current key. I initialize it to space and I'm going to use this convention whenever no key is being pushed, this is going to be space. So I'm going to just draw a space in the canvas. Every other time I'm going to draw the key that's being pushed, which will be stored as a string in this current key. So how do I accomplish that? Well, I have three event handlers that make this work. Okay, the first is key down. So when you actually push a key down, what happens? Well, I'm going to modify current key, so that's declared as a global. And then I'm going to call this function, chr key. What does that do? In Python, chr takes a number and it converts it into a string. Now, simple GUI, when in the key up and key down handlers, it passes you a key code, a number that represents what key is being pushed. And for the, the keys that you correspond to letters and numbers, things that you could actually print, okay, Python, the CHR function, which stands is short for character, will turn that number into the appropriate character, and you can then draw it. Okay? So I'm going to set current key. To that character. On a key up, events, when I'm done pushing the particular key, no matter what it is, I'm going to set current key to space. Now why does this matter? In the draw handler, which is simple GUI is going to call 60 times a second to update the canvas, you can see all I do is draw text. I draw what's ever in current key. I have a list that tells it where to draw it at point 1025. I said use a 20 point font and color it red. Right? And that's why we saw the character show up. It's painting the text that's stored in current key, which these two event handlers, key down and key up, have made sure corresponds to the key that's actually being pressed. I then create the frame. I use a pretty small canvas because we only have one key. I register all three event handlers, all right, and then I start the frame. All right? So let's think about this again really quickly. What's happening? All right. When I push the key, Simple GUI says there's a key down event. Is there a Python function registered to handle this? The answer is yes. It's called key down. It calls it with the key code for G. All right. My program then sets current key to the string G, which then gets drawn and drawn text. I release the G key. Similar thing happens. Simple GUI says, oh, there's a key up event. Is there anything Python function registered for that? The answer is yes. It's called key up. It calls key up. That sets it back to space. The draw handler is being continuously called by Simple GUI, and it just draws whatever is in current key. I want to point out one more thing about the status area. We know that if you push a letter, it'll say down S, up S when I put the, push the S key. When I push a key that is not a letter or some normal printing character like the shift key, you'll see it says down up bracket 16, the control key, down up bracket 17. The numbers inside of the angle brackets, those are the actual key codes. So for keys that you can't easily talk about, you can just try it out, push them, and figure out what their key codes are to use them in your program. Let's take a look now at a more interesting program. This program, I want to control a ball on the screen with the keyboard. Now, if you look in the status area, you can see that I am pressing the arrow keys on the keyboard. Down, right, up, left. All right now, even when I'm not pushing it, the status area continues to show the last keyboard event that occurred, which was pushing down the left arrow. I also want to point out that this program here works by moving it each time I push the key. So if I want the ball to continue to move, I have to keep pushing the key over and over again. All right, so how do I do this? Well, here's the whole program. We have some global variables that tell us the size of the canvas and the radius of the ball. 
We have an important global variable here, ball pause, which is the current position of the ball. We start that out in the center of the screen. We have two event handlers. We create a frame. We uh, set the register the event handlers, the draw and the key down handler, right? And then we start the frame. All right, the draw handler is pretty simple. It's just a single line that draws a circle on the screen, and it draws that circle at ball pause. So as long as ball pause doesn't change, the circle will remain at the middle of the screen. Okay, the workhorse of this program that controls the position of the ball is the key down handler. Key down handler takes as an argument this key, and this is actually a key code. This is not the letter that you pressed, right? There's no letter that I can give you for the left arrow, for instance, okay? So it gives me a key code. This allows me to deal with all of the keys on the keyboard. It allows me to use it across all different browsers and different operating systems, okay? And I just have one big conditional here that checks what key did you push? Okay, and as we said before, we use the simple GUI dot key map to figure that out. And you'll see that to get the arrow keys, you just use the words left, right, down, and up. So simple GUI dot key map bracket left, close bracket, gives me the key code for the left arrow. And so I check, is the key code I got with the handler the same as the left arrow key code? If so, I must have pushed the left arrow. Now ball pause is a list with two elements. Those elements are the X and Y coordinate of the center of the ball. So if I push the left arrow, I want to decrease the X value of the ball position. All right, so I set ball pause bracket zero to be something smaller. I decrease it by this vel variable, short for velocity. This is how fast I want the ball to move in response to the keys. Right, and I'm saying it's gonna be four pixels every time you press a, press a key. Right? So if I press left, I move the X value, I decrease the X value. If I press the right arrow, I increase the X value. I push the down arrow, I increase the Y value. And I push the up arrow, I decrease the Y value. All right? And so every time I push down a key, this handler runs and it changes the position of the ball. Notice that I did not register a key up handler, so when you release the key, nothing happens. And I wanna point out that the key down handler runs once when you push the key. It doesn't keep running. All right, so this only will happen once. As long as I hold down the key, doesn't matter. The key down handler will only be called a single time. Okay, so let's look at this again. So if I push the key down handler, or the key, the down arrow key, the key down handler happens once, and then the ball doesn't move. All right, I'm still holding the key down now. I let it up, nothing happens. I push it again, it moves again. I just keep pushing it keeps moving. Now I want to point out this is not the greatest program ever. I can keep pushing this and ah my balls disappearing. <laughs> Where did it go? Oh wait I'll push the up arrow and get it back. Okay I'm not doing anything to check where you are on the screen. Okay but the point of this program is not to make a robust program. Instead the point of this program is to show you that I can use the keyboard to manipulate objects in the canvas. Now hopefully you realize, even though this program is pretty silly, this is huge. This is a major step towards getting an interesting game where I can actually control the action on the screen. So now you've seen the basics of keyboard input handling using events. And it's really quite simple. That's all there is to it. These two events, right? There's an event when you push the key and there's an event when you release a key. And with these two mechanisms, you can do almost anything with a keyboard, right? We showed you these two simple programs, but they demonstrate most of what you need to know. And I want you to take these programs and play around with them. This is a new concept, so I think it's important that you run these programs in Code Sculptor, you use them, and you make sure that they behave the way you expect. And if they don't, look at the code and try to figure out why. Right? I'm going to tell you that the Echo program doesn't work very well if you push more than one key. Okay, so Try and do that and figure out why it behaves the way that it behaves. We haven't told you quite enough yet to fix it, but I want you to understand why. So I encourage you to play around with it. Now as for the control program, we showed you how to use the keyboard to move a ball around on the, key, on the screen. Pretty soon we're going to show you more interesting and sophisticated control mechanisms. And then at that point, you're really going to be able to do some powerful stuff.